Leading Investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman on this third day of October. We're looking at the Dow up uh, 484. Um, one of the reasons why for subscribers I've been wanting to, we've been trying to buy and we have bought the diamonds uh, for quite a few quite a few sessions, even though uh, interestingly enough, the intraday after getting them, the diamonds actually, that's the Dow, one to one along the Dow. The diamonds, they actually ran a little bit higher and then they turned down. So, um, is the reason that my thinking was that when this market, which is so extremely oversold, finally has more than just a bounce, it could be as much as 10 points. In the in the diamonds well they're only up about uh, five points uh, at this particular point but yeah that's it's the speed with which we get these turnarounds because you first got to get the short covering then you've got to get new buying and then you get a combination and then you get a stalling motion as everybody says wow well, now what and then we'll see if it goes even higher at this particular point you can see that the the uh, one minute chart of the e-mini has just had lovely chart patterns it's walked the nine period moving average then it came down held the 200 period moving average and now it's way up that's at, that was at about 36.25 now we're at 36.57 that's just in the last uh, since 9.40 uh, but this morning look what happened we were way way down at the 35.70 35.71. We're now at 36.59. Look at this. Started off a really nice move right there. That was at about, uh, it was just after I woke up. So, oh, I forgot to put the up arrow. There it is. ABCDE pulls back, holds the 200 period moving average, goes to ABCD, pulls back, goes to E, pulls back, and then starts a much bigger move. ABCD, A, E, alternate count, then ABCD pulls back and then it spikes up to an E and takes its time. Finally, it starts a brand new move, goes to another peak. E, look at how it's the walk in the nine period moving average. The day is young. We've seen this this movie many times before, but I think there is something different. And I'll go to a couple of questions that came up Friday uh, after my show and, and uh, over the weekend. Number one is uh, how come the volatility index – on Friday, in fact, I've got the exact thing here. Uh, here we go. Uh, Paul wants to know. On Friday, the Dow finished down 500 points, and the VIX index was also down. Figure that one out. It clearly shows how irrational the market is today. I'm sure you would be able to explain it. So there are a couple of things that are going on with the volatility index. You remember the volatility index combination that has to do with the, the um, out-of-month futures. Uh, what we're really looking at here is if you consider and you look at the, the weekly chart, that gives you a much better picture. The reason why, I th this is my interpretation, why Friday saw the, the VIX actually pulling back some. We talked about this on my show. But the reason I think it happened was that there's been such a buildup of the volatility index that your base level of, of uh, where it starts to be computed is not showing the big spike in the price because the volatility was already at a high level. That And that allows for uh, some amelioration of the excess of the premium to shrink if other, if other conditions are met. So the answer is you can't use the VIX index purely as a gauge because sometimes that index itself is becoming a gauge because it's being the mechanism with which it's, it's formulated, keeps changing. So the answer there is that it's, it's a, mathematical, uh, a mathematical equation that essentially said at a certain point, kind of like uh, mid-session-ish, that the volatility index 
was shrinking because of other technical reasons. It wasn't just staring at the Dow. Oh, well, let's go to the S&P, although it should be the New York Stock Exchange. But let's just go to the S&P. You can see that move down, inverted Chapman Wave Roman candle. That's a very interesting thing for today because we've already gone to halfway into the wick. If we hold that for about another 60 or, uh, yeah, about another 60 minutes, there's a real good chance we could even go towards the upper end of, of the S&P's candle on Friday, which would say, say that it's at 3645.79 right now. There's a chance that by the end of the day, it gets to 3671.44. Oh, that is a huge move. I don't know. Anyway, that, that's that's the reasoning behind this inverted Chapman Wave Roman candle. So in other words, Paul, it isn't as simple as you and I looking at the VIX and say, oh, my God, the, the Dow's down 300, oh, 400, 500 points. The VIX should be screaming. There are other factors. And it's 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 complicated because we don't know exactly the, the buying and selling that's going on among amongst the heavies, like the fund managers, etc. So that's the reason why, uh, in, a, in a nutshell, that you've got to be very selective. And that's why I've been saying for about six or seven months, try to treat the VIX, that's the VIXI, the dolly, dollar, bondy, bonds, oily, oil, and I'm missing one. Uh, oh, yeah, I did bondy, right? And bonds. Uh, in separate, just think of them separately as much as you can because the relationship that they often have, you can see, look, gold at this particular point is up. Now it's up $14, and the dollar is actually holding pretty well, even if it's slipping a little bit. It's actually holding up 21 ticks. So try to think of these things separately. Look at the VIX index right now, and I spoke about this all of last week, in fact, for about two weeks now. What I've been saying is if the volatility index gets repelled from the Chapman Wave inside track repellent or sell zone, and we start to see it trading under 30 at any point, uh, on a closing basis, that is. That would say to us, if there is a commensurate rally in the, in the market, that that rally can continue a little bit longer. But the VIX index up above 27-ish is still pretty overbought. Uh, no, I shouldn't say overbought. The, the buying intensity is still there in the volatility index. So that's the first question I wanted to answer. Uh, if you wanted to know the mathematical equations, etc., uh, Paul, why don't you send um, uh, Dave White a, a, an email? Because this is this is just right in his wheelhouse. This is the sort of thing he does all the time, and I think he'll be able to answer it mathematically a lot better than I am. Uh, at the moment. Uh, mine is just the reasoning behind it and from oh, all the years that I've looked at the VIX index and kind of what I know about it. But uh, on a purely mathematical basis, he's he's the one that will be able to respond a lot better. Now, the other thing is the TLT I was asked about. Um, do I think the TLT is ready for a rally? And my answer is, while I might think it's ready for a rally, and look at the TLT. Wait, look at this. The weekly weekly chart has made that dreaded H pattern and kind of failed. It went underneath the left side low, and that was the left side low in the 107s. And here it is at 103. It actually went to just over. Well, it was 101. Was it on Friday? Uh, 100.90. Unbelievable. Let me type that in. 100.90. So, oh wow, we had a break already. So the things I've said, this is what you need to look for for a sustained rally. Is the volatility index moving? Preferably seeing the bonds rally so that yields can come down. Crude oil is in the mix, but it is, isn't as important. In fact, I'll be back. Basil Chapter Tight, Nish Sauer, Dazza 529. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. 
A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks, and look how steady the E mini is here. The one minute chart holding above the nine period moving average, which is above the, the 14 period moving average, and make a peak E. Uh, there's a lot going on, but it's only a peak B in the two minute chart. And the five-minute chart, I believe, let me just double-check. I don't want to talk out of turn here, is this is a brand-new buy. Yep, that's, that went to a D. This is a brand-new buy mode. Uh, stochastics at 86%. Wow. So that was a peak D right then, right? Put it down, arrow. Still walking the nine-period moving average. This is a five-minute chart. Unbelievable. A and peak B right here. Let's see if this holds. You know, the selling pressure has been so intense and comes in so quickly that we'll see. We'll see if it does that today. I, my thinking is that we've got a, a trend change here and that September, for a little while at least, we might be able to say, hey, was that a low in September? And October, funnily enough, the worst month usually is, is going to be, you know, at least decent. It doesn't have to be great. All right, let's get back to our story. So we're looking at, um, we spoke about the VIX index. The TLT, if I look at bonds, and TLT is the 20-year uh, Lehman Treasury bond fund. If I look at bonds, this is only a leg A after four candles making a low, and that's quite a low. You're talking about now, I'm talking about the continuous contract. So the price that I give you now might not be the price in a month's time, but everything else, the lettering, the shape, the pattern, everything is the same. It's just they it get smoothed out because it's continuous contracts. So the high of uh, 183 and 18.30 seconds in March of 2020, saw so more than a one-to-one -one move down to the left side. And of course, what we're looking at here is October of 2018, it was at 123s. I said 123s because I wanted to include the smoothing out, 123 and 30, uh, 30 seconds back in October. So that also changed at some point. But what did we do? We came right down. It wasn't a, an exact left side, right side price tie match. But if I take the little candle that I always, I like to, if, I, if, if it moves to the right 
a little more than I would expect from a pattern that says a lovely arch or inverted V-shaped pattern or a cup formation with the, the fulcrum where the plumb line is not in the middle anymore, then you have to use artistic license. I like it if it's mathematical, it's great. But if it's not, you have to use some artistic license, and that means all your experience goes into that. And that takes us to, that took us to the December time frame for a test of one, two, and three. We did it a little earlier. We did it in October. Sorry, we did it in September at 123 and 30, 30 seconds. An exact test to the tick of the low of October 2018. In other words, the Fed gave us lower rates from 2018 to the high that was made March of, March of 2020. And then it took until March of 2020, it took us until September of 2022 to retest that. That retest says to me that there's a very, very good chance that some kind of rally in the bonds is able to unfold. The MACD, I would like in October for this histogram, this red line, right, the vertical line, I'd like it to improve a little bit. The on balance volume is way oversold, but the stochastic is only at 18%. I would prefer right now if it was at about 9% or 7%. That would say extremely oversold, but oversold in the stochastic doesn't mean it has to bounce. Oversold in the unbalanced volume almost always suggests that there's a really good chance, and you've got that in the weekly, you've got that in the daily, and it's only now turning up. So my suspicion is, and it's only a suspicion we'll know for sure, if the um, if the bonds trading right now at 128 and 21 30 seconds up to and 8.30 seconds, nice green candle. Just uh, We've seen so many big red candles. It's a, it's a beautiful thing to see this green candle. And the weekly chart, we haven't seen a green candle since the high that was made in August, the week of August the 5th. It's just been red, lower highs and lower lows, right up until um, the Chapman Wave. This is the Roman candle last week. And this says there needs to be a close Two out of three sessions, it's great if it happens the very next session above the high that was made, this is the weekly chart, of last week, which is 128 and 31, 30 seconds. <clears throat> we were very close. We were at 128 and 22, 30 seconds. We've got the entire week to close above it. If it closes two out of three weeks above the Chapman Wave Roman candle, then the low that you've made suggests that the middle part, the the open, let me just give you the exact number, that the open of 128 and 11, uh, 128 and 128 and 31, 30 seconds should become very good support within that area. I'd, I'd say within a half a point, that should become very good support and it should last for at least five bars. So there's a lot of ifs, but it's... Uh, Better to have the ifs with a with a 60 to 65 percent probability than the ifs that just look like they it's a, an outside chance. So um, yeah, so that's the, so it's, the answer to the question was if you look at J and K, which is junk, that is the Spider Barclays high yield bond made a peak D back in July or so of 2021, uh, having gone from the 83 or 84 level. Back in 2020, screams up to 110, double tops, comes back down, and it, it went down to the 87.42 level on Friday, uh, sorry, last week, and now it's trading 88.31. Nothing really to see here. This is just a, a sideways move, but if there's a chance that junk, Jay, the bo spider Barclays high yield bond trading at 88.33 at 48 cents actually closes even one day above the arch high of 89.17. That's the high of the 28th of September. It says, great, now the 14 period moving average of uh, 89.47, that could become a target. So just step by step by step, um, that's what we're trying to do here. And within that context, the other one is HYG. HYG has a slightly different chart pattern, only made a peak C in the uh, monthly chart underneath the previous major high. And that was a high of in January of 2020 of 
88.53, has a little bit of a dip and goes down to 67.52. I mean, these are bonds. That's incredible. And then spirals up in a V-shaped pattern and then arches over um, and comes back down in Australia right now at 71.90. Uh, and the low on early last week was 70.90. So this is also just... These are not saying bonds are going to go screaming to the upside. What this is saying is that it might be hard work and you could get a bit of a bounce in the iShares, iBox, uh, uh, high yield corporate bond ETF. And that, as it stands right now, that ain't a pretty picture. Not a pretty picture at all. Okay, we've got a break coming up. We've got a number of questions that have come in. I'll do them on the FX. Uh, oh, it's interesting. I just spoke about the HYG uh, put. Yeah, put uh, now be a little careful just on the short term. I'll be back in a minute. Basil Chapman, Tiger Tech, Christian Sauer, Dow's up 660, SMEs up 70. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Delicious Hour, Dow's up 610, SP's up 71. And what I said to subscribers in my overview uh, on Saturday, my uh, video that I always send out on the weekend, um, was that it was really, and a question just came in, uh, you spoke about, Basil, Joe says, you spoke about the silver acting so well last week and, and gold lagging. But you've also pointed out that silver sometimes catches up to gold and then gold takes its place. There's a big difference here. And the difference is silver's up 7.52%. That's the reason why on Friday we got into a silver stock, had a very good session, 
and today it's now up uh, over 14%. Uh, and um, I, I just, I couldn't believe it because as I was looking at the charts, I was pointing out, let's go over there. This is where it was. So what I'm looking at is a peak C1, C2. There's a Chapman wave inside track repellent zone. Um, that's the straw on the left. That's silver. And now you've got gold. Look at this. Gold, now it's really coming on fire. It's up 27. But gold was acting much weaker. And even the weekly chart, look at that. It did this dreaded H pattern. And then it made a second one, went to a lower low. The monthly chart... So my, my theory has been that something has to happen. Maybe it's the dollar starting to pull back, and I'll just do this because I like to put to put into a um, into like a chessboard so that you've got everything. You can look at the whole pattern. So in the Chapway methodology, when you get to a peak D, that's the fourth highest peak. That's where you've got to be a little bit careful. You can go higher, but at peak D, other things can happen. Well, it made a peak D. Uh, multi-decade high, uh, that's the dollar index, at 114.78. Now I can type that in. This one doesn't get smoothed out. This one stays the same because it's an index. So this is the dollar index, and we still we along from 90.07 via the UUP from four years ago. Anyway, what we're looking at is within this context, the dollar looked like it's, it was ready for a breather. That's all I'm saying, a breather. But when you put it together with the USDJPY, and that is the, <clears throat> look, this is the US dollar Japanese yen currency pair. Look at that long candle. That essentially says you're, that wildness of making a new uh, recovery high or some all-time high, it doesn't matter what it is, but it's a high, and then pulling back sharply and then kind of trading in the middle says you've kind of run out of steam in that direction. But you don't necessarily have to break down. What you need to do is watch the outer limits. So the outer limits are just if it closes over 146, that's really good action. If it closes under 140, that's not good action. But it could be stuck in the middle digesting gains. Look at the doji candle of the weekly chart of the dollar Japanese yen currency pair. And even today, it popped up a little bit, but it has not gone above the 145.90 high that was made uh, eight sessions ago. And that's really important. So that said to me that there is room for the, for the gold and silver area to at least having gone sideways and then down to at least bounce. But when I looked at it closely... My, my theory at that particular point said, for whatever reason, silver is acting incredibly well. And look at Friday's action. It broke above. It, it, it broke above the nine period moving average. It, went, it was still pink, but it started to move higher above the 14. And today you've got a crossover with an L meaning long. So that says that silver, even though I'm calling it D, it could be a brand new A but I'm being conservative, calling it D, and the weekly charge, see that A there, becomes an A minus because it failed in the dreaded H pattern. That means it made an arch formation, took out the left side low, and within two bars, it got back above that left side high, then it went to a gray A, and call it gray because it's under the previous A, and now this is a gray B. I'm still calling it gray because the MACD is good, the stochastic's only at 40% 40 until the stochastic really improves a lot. I have to call this gray. Not a buy signal yet, just a really nice turnaround at a trough D. And the monthly chart has gone one to more than one to one to the downside. Can't even discuss that now. So what is happening? This is independent of other commodities. Because look, um, high-grade copper, yes, it's come off the low. It looks a little better, but it doesn't look good in the weekly chart. Um, if, you, if you look at crude oil, a uh, soft commodity, very nice action, given back some of the game, but still up four at 83.50. Very oversold in this arch formation in the weekly chart. So this allows a bunch of things to happen. If crude oil at this particular point rallies, it could be saying, hey, maybe things are not quite as bad um, as we thought, because crude oil pulling back says, no, there's no demand. And even though there's shortages, if you talk about shortages, let's go to natural gas. Look at this, natural gas, sharply down today, down 
40 cents at 6.36. I mean, really? What, what, what's happening over there? And we're talking about this winter and people are going to freeze to death. Uh, natural gas is saying maybe there's something else going on. This is really strange action, isn't it? I mean, from what you read and what you see. So let's go back to silver. So all I could say at that time was silver was acting very well. Silver was acting better than gold. I had no idea where it had where it could go because it hadn't yet broken the Chaffin Wave inside track repellent zone. But we decided, at least I decided, we would get a, a, a very low-priced silver stock that should participate in the rally. So silver is up uh, 8%, and the day is young. We're fortunate that this particular stock is up uh, 14, almost 15%. So... I mean, that's all you can do in this particular market. There's no guarantee even that everything I'm saying about the VIX index pulling back, etc., is going to spark the kind of rally that says, whew, you know, in, a, in two weeks, not even two weeks, in a week and a half. What is today? Today's the th a third. So let's go to the calendar. So let's just say by the 11th, by Tuesday week, what if, the Dow has not taken out the lower Friday or the S&P or the QQQ, but in fact has held quite well. Hasn't had a spectacular move, but it's held quite well. That'll be the first time in a while that it's even held quite well. So all I'm saying is that based on everything I'm looking at, based most importantly on the work that I've done for years and years on the, um, on the on balance volume, let me just go to that now. And I spoke about that the other day. I'll do that again. Let's go to the S&P. Look at this. On balance volume. Look at that. And if I, if I drag this across, see, the, the further back you go, the less chance that the low that's being made becomes a low. But if it actually is the low, that is significant because it made a high sometime in August before the 43.25 high of the 18th of August, it already started turning down. This on balance volume, that's Joe Granville's, if the price of whatever you're following closes the bar higher, it's a running total and you add it to the total. If it's down, you subtract that total from the running total. Just a simple thing. I used to do that by hand with so many charts, I couldn't believe it, the calculator and all. Um, and uh, when it when it became software and it, it just look at that uh, just a single line I love that's how I use volume. P other people use volume in a different way, and that just says to me, we're at the opportunity. which is improving for five sessions. Unbalanced volume, very oversold, turning up for us to have a pretty decent rally this week. I'll be back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living to stay on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I was asked a little earlier, would I uh, look at the uh, NQZ22, that's the NASDAQ December contract, e uh, futures contract, um, I, in the 30-minute time frame. I didn't have a chance to actually finish it up, but I'll do that right now. Um, and this is going to be, I'm drawing this in, but it's one of those situations where uh, it, it very often happens does it happen this time? Well, you'll have to see how this MACD continues high and the stochastic at 86% holds in the 80s. It preferably goes to a stronger 90% area. But we're in leg D in the 30-minute chart. We made a trough at uh, 21, so that's last night at 9 o'clock in the... 9 o'clock on the 20s. Yeah, 9 o'clock. So that's interesting. So the... NQ didn't make a lower low and the S&P did. All right, well, all right, 9 o'clock. And what happened was it went to peak A, peak B. Then it flipped to green. And now it is positive. It's in leg D. The 200-period moving average is at 11,254. It's trading right now at 11,207. So far, it's acting okay. But I have a time frame. I don't know if I can stretch. I'll do that because it was asked for. I was trying to do it. So format, I'm going to go to space to the right. Let me just increase that to about 13. There we go. Yeah. Okay. So it says, based on this particular pattern, if it can hold above 11,120 for the next two hours, there's a chance that by, and I'll make this green, here we go, green, that by 4.30 this afternoon, <laughs> oh, that's, that's asking a lot. By 4.30 this afternoon, it should hit 11,357. The high that was made in this lopsided cup formation, it, uh, you remember the lopsided rectangle or cup formation, if you make higher highs and higher lows, there's a good chance you're going to go to a leg D, maybe even higher, but leg D, and then a peak D just under, just on or just above the previous major high. That's the high of 11,357 in the futures at 1130 uh, on the 30th. That's on Friday. Uh, and we'll see. All right. And that just says that if, we, if you keep holding and walking this green line, you should be able to do that. And that'll be, what did I say? by about 4.30 this afternoon. In other words, 4.50, or well, as the futures are closing after the uh, regular session. All right, with that said, a couple of things that I want you to look at. Yes, the FXI, good. You know, the FXI, which is the China large cap ETF or fund, ETF, uh, made a lower low today at 25.94. It's gone from 54.33. Remember, these. this is large cap. It's gone to a leg E in the monthly chart from 54.33 in February of this year to today's low of 25.65. I would have to say that's a little bit more than a 50% decline. Can you imagine in the large cap China uh, stocks? Um, yeah, 
that's something to uh, make a note of. Uh, yes, uh, thank you for that comment about uh, the uh, trillions and trillions that, uh, if you include bond stocks, um, uh, the last 46 trillion that is almost equal to our total national debt. Oh my God. Uh, you'll not ever hear this mentioned uh, by the corrupt news network. All right, well, you know, I, I don't look at things as. Uh, corrupt or not corrupt it just it is what it is and sometimes it's biased you're the one that is in control of what what you you can manage and just think of it this way that <coughs> excuse me yes maybe you haven't had it report i've actually heard this reported i don't know if it was on a major news network or anything but i, I don't get carried away with that just you it is what it is right now the dow is up 620 that means from Friday's, and there was a massive turnaround on Friday, from Friday's high of 29,355.78, we have hit 29,366.21. That's all I ask for. This is now a gray leg A, the start of, a, of an up move. But until the stochastic improves, the MACD improves, it's just a gray. Now, the gray means I haven't got an official buy signal even yet. And if I do, I still have to get a buy mode to suggest that this particular pattern can take you to a D. So it's just a starting process. I love this kind of process, but it is a starting process. A question came in. Okay, now I need to get to some stocks. Apple. Apple made a lower low today. It made a low of 137.68. It had a high of 182.94 in January. For Apple, this is a huge move to the downside. In any other stock, we'd be thrilled if other stocks were looking like Apple's monthly chart. Um, it's just within a pretty, a fairly narrow trading range if you consider um, 180 from 180 to 130s. Uh, a small trading range, yes. For a big cap stock, if you look at Adobe, uh, not quite in the same area, but look at this, 699 to 280. Uh, yeah, that is just a, a, an incredible decline. Microsoft, not as bad. Microsoft uh, has gone from 349 to the 230s. That is a big move. Leg C down in the monthly chart. Oh, and the monthly charts did close on Friday so that I can talk about them today. Let me just do this. This is a leg C down, and I have a down arrow. So there's now a sell mode in Microsoft to be able to change that back to a buy signal and then a buy mode. Whew, you have to see something. You have to see it trading in the 290, somewhere in the 280 to 290 area to really get a buy signal again. And let me just do that with Apple. Apple is not yet, it's just, it's, I'm not even sure that I can officially call it a sell signal, although technically it's very close. Um, I did that, I did that, I wanted to do, uh, I'm, oh, Netflix, yep, Netflix, Netflix, look at that. I mean, it goes from 700 down to 215, it's trading right now, 235. Yeah, some of these... I, I would say that some of these are in major downturns and that to be able to recycle, to, to start a whole brand new buy signal in the monthly that goes to a buy mode, it's going to take a lot to do that. But if you look at a Caterpillar, look at, keep your eye on the right chart. That's the monthly chart of Netflix. Look at this. This is Caterpillar. It looks a little bit like, uh, it almost looks like the Microsoft chart. Yes, it's very weak. And it's gone to a sell mode in the um, in the day, even though it's in at a peak B, not a B minus yet, but it's a peak B. Uh, this is uh, this is significant. But how? Look at this beautiful move up. Peak A pulls back sideways. Leg B above the 14 period moving average. So there are signs, and this is another reason when I did some of my homework over the weekend and I looked at the cyclicals. For instance, if I look at the SLX. Um, on Friday, that was looking very weak. But look at this bounce today, up 252 at 50.27. It was once upon a time in April at 70.43. So this is a big move down. But this is the steel ETF. If we can garner strength, I mean, this is the first hour, not even an hour and a half into this week, the first hour and a half of the monthly chart of October. So that's the reason why I said to subscribers, we, I, I don't want to be afraid of going long, 
but it has to be very selective. And we will know within two sessions what's working, what we can get into, and uh, basically what new positions to take. I would like to take new positions. We've got a cash position. And we've got, I also want to get some very low price stock, like we've got the silver stock, very, very low price. It just allows you to have a nice gain. I'll be back. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month and try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi there, folks. Just for a very, very short time, I'm looking at the one-minute chart, probably making a peak E here in the chap wave. The uh, two-minute chart is making a peak D, and the five minutes making a, a, a peak D. No, it's a leg D. It hasn't made a peak D yet. But... They're all walking the nine period moving average. They're all holding very nicely. So we're going to be watching closely. Let me just say that by the end of the day. Now, let me just first of all say key support is the 36.57 level. Uh, if it closes under that, just be careful because the 200 period of moving average of 36.42 would beckon. But if at any point it starts to hold for 35 minutes, this is the E mini. A trading at 36.72, up 70 points right now. If at any time it starts to trade about 36.92, wow. Then we're looking at the chance of, first of all, that NASDAQ could do what we were talking about before. And then we're having a chance that that high that was made on Friday, right there, 11.20 of 36.84, of course, that's the part that will be tackled to the upside, and, and if it holds, it goes even higher. So with that said, let me just say that uh, check out my opening call, my daily newsletter, and within that context, 
what we are looking at here is that the uh, if you can get, let's look at the XLP just real quickly. That got smashed to the downside. This is the staples, consumer staples, spider fund. So if this fails to have a decent rally and just go sideways, in a sense that'll say, hey, that could allow not the staples, not the not the defensive type of um, s sector to move higher, but you could even start to see the cyclicals. Let's see what Deer is doing. Deer right now, uh, not as good as Caterpillar, but yes, if these things could move, that'll be very... In other words, you need to see the volatility index continue lower. That at this particular point, that's really at 30.0. I said closing under 29, 20, 29. That would be very good uh, for the week, not just for the day, but for the week. You want to see a decent, a decent stuff close for the week for the first time in ages. Have a wonderful rest of the week. Stay tuned for Steve Rose and great programming here at TFNN. I'll be back tomorrow.